So tonight we will show you what I have done in the past with great success and how it operates. Now, if I wanted something in this world, and who doesn't, I would formulate an act which would imply that I have it. And then in my imagination, I would simply, having performed that act, I would yield completely to this being within me to execute it. I would fall off into sleep, convinced that he heard me that he saw my act in faith. I simply yield completely to him having acted. It's an act of self-commission. I perform the act. What act? I act as though I had what I sought. I act as though I heard that you have what you asked of me. I perform an act. And then I yield completely to that depth of my own being, who is God, and allow him, from that depth, to externalize it for me. All I have to do is to completely yield to this being within me, for he has ways and means I, on this level of my being, know not of. I rise then under compulsion. And under this compulsion, I go through a series of events which will lead up to the fulfillment of that to which I yielded. I assume that it's done. And then I commune with myself and gave thanks within me that it is done. And it works in every way. You want to be and you name it. You want to be successful in the world of Caesar, in dollars and cents, nothing wrong with it. You want to be a successful doctor, successful lawyer, success, I don't care what it is. You want to be, well then formulate in your mind's eye what it would be like if it were true. How would you see the world if you were now the man that you would like to be? See it in your mind's eye and then yield yourself completely to the depth of your own being. How do I do that? Simply fall asleep in the assumption. I dare to assume that I am the man that at the moment reason denies and then fall asleep in that assumption, leaving it completely to the depth of my own being to externalize it in my world. I will wake tomorrow morning under compulsion to do certain things which I had not formulated, I hadn't determined. I'll find I'll meet the right people. I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the other. And it all adds up towards the externalization of my assumption. So within you is that power, within you is that wisdom to do anything that you desire in this world. So this is the faith of which I speak. How do I do it? You can sit right here. And you go to bed at night, as you're told in the fourth song. Commune with your own self upon your bed and be silent. You don't commune with another, you commune with your own self. That's God. For the self of man is God. When you say I am, that's God. There is no other God. But you don't see him now. He has become invisible. The darkest night in the world was when God became invisible. He told the story to all of us before we set forth. Then he became invisible and took up his residence in us. He became invisible and in us he is I am, my own wonderful human imagination. That's God. So I don't see my imagination as I see objects in space. For imagination is the reality that is causing these objects in space. So I see the fruits of its activity, but I do not see it because it is invisible. The day will come, I will see it. I have seen him. He has no beginning, no end. He is the ancient of days, but he's infinite love. There's nothing but love. 
Yet he will wait on us just as swiftly and as indifferent when the will in us is evil as when it is good. For it is he who does all things that I kill, I make alive. I wound, I heal. I do all these things and none can deliver out of my hand. So if the will in man is evil, he will execute it. If it is good, he will execute it because there is no other creator. So it is entirely up to man what he imagines. What am I going to imagine? But remember, when I imagine, I must imagine and then completely yield. That is faith. You've been taught to believe you're a worm. You came out of the swamp. And then suddenly you became a tadpole. Then you became something else. And finally you find yourself a man. Forget it. You are the gods who came down from heaven and assume the restriction, the limitation of man. This is the limit of contraction and you assume it. And you're going to fulfill a definite purpose in man. And while you walk the earth as man, that predetermined plan will erupt within you and the whole thing will unfold within you. Beginning with the resurrection. The resurrection did not take place in the Near East, in some little place where they're looking for it now. It takes place in man. Man is where God is buried. The Holy Sepulchre is the skull of man. It's not in the Near East. The Bethlehem that they're talking about is in the skull of man. Zion, his holy place where he dwells, that's the skull of man. And the whole drama unfolds within man. And man awakens within himself to find himself completely sealed within his skull. And he comes out like a child being born out of his own skull. And then, a few months later, comes an explosion in his skull and that compartment that contained the Son of God, who was his will, who was his wisdom, releases the Son. You would not let my soul remain in hell, said he, in the 16th Psalm. So he brings him up, he resurrects his son, and the son is David. And David, looking at the father, and the father for the first time, knows who he is. Memory returns. And the father, the son was the one who revealed him to himself. So the whole drama unfolds within man and the whole thing is contained within the skull of man. It has nothing to do with anything on the outside. They're looking in vain, all the archaeologists, and they bring back all this nonsense. You are the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing outside of man. The whole drama takes place within man. And it has nothing to do with anything outside. You're living in a world of shadows. And the drama is within. So let us now get back to this simple approach of faith. Do you know what you want? Either for yourself or for another. Construct a scene which would imply the fulfillment of your dream. Just construct it. Enter into it just as though it were true. Feel what it would feel like if it were true. And give thanks to the one who is going to execute it. It's your own being, I grant you. But he is the depth of your own being. He is the Father. You haven't yet found him, but he is the Father. And you are now on the surface of your being. So fall asleep in the conviction that things are as you desire them to be in confidence that he will execute it. I use the word he, it's yourself. But for clarity's sake, I say he, because you're not aware of him as yet. You will be one day. Everyone will be aware of their being. And because that being has one son 
and that one son is the son of all we are one there's only one there aren't millions of gods only one God but the one God is made up of a brotherhood and we are the brothers raising ourselves to the level of the one God but I've been sent to tell you this and tell you I will and must if only a few hear it what does it matter you hear it with conviction because I tell you the truth it will last I am not here to set up some little ism I am not here to speculate and try to set up some little philosophical setup that may work no I want no church no ism just to tell you who you are and you will tell it to others and others will tell it because in the end you're going to prove it to be true you can't rub it out because it is true all that I have told you is true I'm not speculating I'm not theorizing I stood in the presence of the infinite being and his infinite love and he embraced me and he sent me after he embraced me therefore love embraced me therefore guided by love we became one body people misled morning noon and night by so-called holy men forget it man comes to you telling you he's a holy person turn around and start running all these holy fellows they just simply meet you and meet another crowd and the next thing they do they run to the bank with what was in your pocket picked up one fellow here he's flying off to Switzerland he was in Spain after having collected a fortune they found three hundred thousand dollars of him on him and he was at the Mara Rishi that came up through this country it wasn't the Mara Rishi it was his secretary running off to Switzerland where you'd put it into your Swiss bank and all the people fall for it morning noon and night and so if you're taking over you hate to hear it because people hate to know that others know they were beguiled and so those who gave their fortunes to him five hundred dollars to teach them how to meditate about the nonsense in the world teach you how to meditate it's just a simple simple thing you don't meditate on your navel you don't meditate on any of these things whatsoever you know what you want what would the feeling be like if it were true what would it be like assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled well anyone can do that a child can do that what would it be like if it were true that's meditating now yield completely and the being within you will take that and externalize it for you meditating on your kundalini fire and all this nonsense has nothing to do with it and going into so-called diets diets will not commit you or commend you to God he gave you a palate didn't he or then exercise the palate too and so I'm going to go on a certain diet a friend of mine went on the diet of things that you should only feed parrots but she isn't a parrot eating pumpkin seeds and eating all these things if you really enjoy them but don't tell me that you really enjoy them you could, of course you could acquire a taste for anything I don't so you can't but exercise that God-given gift it's a palate and simply enjoy it so to come down to the night message on faith by faith the worlds were created by the word of God faith does not give reality to the unseen things faith is loyalty to unseen reality for this thing exists all things exist I tell you my own experience that entire world that is unseen to this world exists now it actually exists not out there beyond the stars right here it's all existing right here and the day will come that you will actually awake and you'll be able to step into these unnumbered sections of time a thousand years ago has not passed away 
And 2,000 years from now is not something that is going to suddenly form itself. It is now. And you are simply in a section of time. And the day will come you'll be able to move into any section of time. All these things exist now. And the purpose of it all is simply to awaken. And when you awaken, who are you? You are the author of it all. You are God. God the creator. But to come back to our wonderful approach tonight. You want a better job? You want more money? You want this? You want that? Don't be ashamed of it. Who gave you the urge? The Father did. You have the desire. It came from the depths of your own being. So he can execute it. He only asks you to have faith. Faith in what? Faith in him. Have faith in God. All right. Where is he? He is my own wonderful human imagination. I cannot see the fulfillment now, but he will do it. Well now, assume that I am already the man that I want to be, and yield completely to that assumption and fall asleep. Just completely fall asleep and completely forget it. A lady who is here tonight, she called me up on the phone here just a few days ago and asked something of me. I will not tell you, it's too personal. But she asked me to please care for a certain thing. It's so simple. I sat in my chair after I spoke to her on the phone and heard her tell me. But she came back tonight and told me that it has happened. She is here, she is seated here tonight. Drove all the way in from San Bernardino to tell me this story. And it simply worked. What did I do? It didn't cost me anything. It cost you nothing. What does it cost anyone to have faith in